in today's society it is more and more often required that we are awake at night. It may be because of shift work, it may be because we are studying very hard for an exam. To really understand what is happening when you're pulling such an all-nighter is important because society, your boss wants you to be awake at night, your biological clock wants you to sleep at that particular time. Almost all organisms on Earth use internal biological clocks, called circadian clocks, to help them adapt to the cycle of night and day. As humans, we have a circadian clock in our brain that, among other things, helps us to stay alert and awake during the day and to sleep at night. So what happens when we break this cycle and don't go to sleep at all? Here at the University of Surrey, in the Surrey Sleep Research Centre, we have specialised facilities which allow us to study the effects of pulling an all-nighter under very controlled conditions. The participants are kept awake for 40 or 42 hours while you are lying in a bed in a dimly lit room. These bedrooms are sound attenuated, obviously light controlled, temperature controlled. We can study the cognition in these individuals. We can simply ask them how sleepy they are. We can draw blood samples and then look at the rhythms in hormones. And of course, we can record their brain waves to quantify sleep and wakefulness. We can actually see what the biological clock is telling to the rest of the body and to the rest of the brain. If you keep someone awake for 40 hours straight and measure their alertness, you find something surprising. Instead of alertness dropping and getting worse the longer someone is kept awake, as it gets to morning on the second day of sleep deprivation, alertness actually starts to increase again. This is because there are two forces controlling when we should sleep. The first is sleep pressure, which builds up the longer we are awake. But the second is our circadian clock, which drives alertness during the day, but promotes sleep at night. It's the circadian clock that gives us a fresh burst of alertness on the second day, as it stops promoting sleep and starts promoting wakefulness again. So when you are a shift worker, but you don't go to sleep at 10 o'clock in the morning after your night shift, but you stay awake, as the participants in our sleep deprivation protocols do, you will find it slightly easier the second day. So despite you having been awake now for 27 or 35 hours, can stay awake easier because the clock during the biological day will help you to stay awake. What do we learn from these studies? Well, first of all, if we understand the interaction between those circadian rhythms and our sleep-wake cycle, and then we can design, for example, shift work schedules that will lead to less disruption of brain function. Understanding this interaction may also help us to understand why in, in certain neurodegenerative diseases disruption of the sleep-wake cycle is, is so important and how maybe by rescuing the sleep-wake cycle we can ameliorate some of the effects of those neurodegenerative diseases or even the effects of aging uh, itself.